So today I will be finishing the repair of this uh, Weather King air conditioner. Uh, first thing I want to do is get the fan grill back off the top again. I've already gotten the screws loose and I actually removed the motor from it already. Um, There's a bad capacitor or a preventive replacement capacitor, let's put it that way. It was an improperly specced capacitor. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take this uh, grill off the top and get to where the motor is supposed to go. The old motor's already out, but through seeing how the new motor mounts, you'll see how the old motor came out. I didn't think about making this video until afterward. So uh, I wish I had a professional camera mount for this, but it'll be moving around while I'm doing some of this stuff. And I apologize for that in advance, but here we go. So on the top, around the grill, you'll see that there's these little screws like this. Um, these were all loosened from when I uh, had removed the motor before. So whenever you uh, remove something like that, or whenever you're waiting for parts to come in, which is what I was doing, you want to make sure that you put all these screws and things back where they go. Um, I have to come back and get that one with a wrench. Um, just kind of finger tighten them in so that you know they don't get lost, basically. But I always put them in groups. I'll, I'll leave these screws up here because that way I won't get them mixed up with other screws I'm taking out later on. And I'll know that they all go to this grill up here on top. So we'll take this screw out here. And then we got one more. Down here again, I'll give one more hand, try with the hands, but uh, apparently uh, that one got torched a little bit, so I'm going to get a, uh, a wrench or something like that to get that one out. All right, this ought to be better here. I'll hold the camera and twist this thing. It probably was only barely caught. Yeah, it was. Only barely. Got the rest of the way out with my finger. And so there we go. Now we're done with that. Take all my tools, put them over here, which is a good point to uh, point out something else. Whenever you're working on something like this, where there may be uh, electricity at all, even the potential for electricity, um, you want to make sure you take off any watches, any uh, you know keys you got with you or anything like that, anything that's pretty much metal, because if anything for any reason accidentally makes uh, contact through those and you're uh, touching a ground of some sort, um, it's going to conduct all the electricity through those. You're going to fry not only the device, but most importantly, you're probably going to burn yourself the electricity, which is quite possibly a lot of electricity and could injure yourself quite badly, potentially even kill yourself in some scenarios. Uh, and I also want to point out that this is the main power for this uh, air conditioning unit. I always want to make sure you pull this completely out before you start on something like this. So that's out and I actually, in addition, turned off the breaker for the main AC so there's no residual voltage or anything like that. Well, there could be tiny amounts of residual voltage, but there's no voltage possibly coming from anywhere to this thing, uh, at least that I can, I can think of. The breaker's off and this main uh, power breaker here is, is disconnected, so power interrupter, I should say. All right, back to this thing. Now I've gotten this uh, thing uh, unscrewed from here. Now I want to take out these little screws. These were the screws that originally held the the uh, motor itself in there upside down if I can get this thing <laughs> to focus in you know, well, anyway they're a little bit different different marking on them uh, actually these uh, I'm sorry these are the same as the other two but they'll be easy to distinguish because they're black on top from the fact that uh, I had actually painted this grill a little bit to protect it from the rust that was starting to film form on it I figured while I got it all apart I'll pull this thing out and then lift this off completely gone while we're doing this and we look in here uh, another good time to point out that while I was doing this I had actually um, taken the time to very very lightly uh, well actually fairly aggressively sand this this was all rusty on the top so I sanded it and then very carefully without getting a bunch of overspray or much of any overspray on anything else I very carefully took this and uh, coated this a couple times with paint so it pretty much looks like new you don't want to cover it too too heavy no more than your, any original amount of paint was on there because uh, you know heat transfer is important for these things and uh, so they got to be able to keep themselves cool so anyway but uh, that's mainly to keep water from continuing to collect in the rust that's there and absorb and rust further and further through so this will extend the life of that compressor there which is already almost 10 years old so just one of those little points now it's time to get the motor out. Okay, here I figured I'd just point out the uh, original motor. 
which you can see all the original specifications on. And one thing you do not want to play around with is on these types of jobs is that uh, you don't want to get something that's kind of close. There are those who do, but really, for the life of everything and for the sake of protecting your investment in your air conditioner and uh, the time and effort of doing all this, you want to get the right stuff. Uh, this motor here was, uh, I was able to find direct replacement for it. Um, the name ProTech is kind of synonymous with these model air conditioners. Uh, they're a, a, a very good replacement, uh, something that the actual is as officially, you know, a brand that Ream or Rudd or uh, Weather King, all kind of the same, would, uh, would use. So you want to make sure you get the right thing. Um, I had no idea what model number to get, so that's where coming in and looking at this label came into play. Uh, you look up the model number, you know, and it'll tell you what to get. Uh, there's also other model number information here, but sometimes those get replaced, so it's usually not too difficult. In my case, I was able to confirm it by calling a local um, AC supply, uh, HVAC supply store, and they were kind enough to verify for me what part needed to be ordered. Uh, just tell me, you know, I didn't, I wasn't even trying to buy from, I just said, you know, can you tell me which part I need and no warranty or anything like that. They just told me. And, uh, unfortunately, locally, it was significantly higher. It was about a hundred dollars more to buy the motor from them. So I had to order it uh, online because, because it wasn't even close. So I ended up paying 125 for this, uh, with no shipping costs or anything like that. 125 straight up. It took about a week to get here, but you know, we just kind of lived with the window unit, uh, in the meantime. And, uh, so there it is. Uh, I think I got this from NorthAmericanHVAC.com. They seem to be pretty knowledgeable. I actually asked them as well to verify it, and they said it was the same part number as well. So there's the motor. Uh, now we got to get the fan and uh, get the fan mounted on this thing. Okay, so here's the fan. This is what came off the original motor. Um, it was very simple to you know, use a wrench and loosen this and remove it off the spindle. Um, main thing is you don't want to bend these at all. Whatever you do, you don't want to bend the metal blades. And when you're putting this back on uh, to your new motor, you want to make sure that whatever you do, it faces the same direction. You don't want to get it, here I go, uh, turned around like this or vice versa uh, because it's going to change the direction of air movement and essentially it'll end up you burning out your compressor. The air needs to move one direction for maximum efficiency. So in this case, when this motor is mounted in here, it's actually hanging upside down. By the way, these are quite heavy. It's actually hanging upside down. And it goes in like, uh, turn it over, Jay, flip it over to the other side. Okay, it actually goes in like this. So when we put it on, we're gonna flip this over. See that there? And we're gonna flip that over, same way. We're looking at, essentially, we're looking at the entire thing upside down. And we've got to line, there's a little locking See that line along the top of that thing? Boy, I wish you think auto focus a little bit better. Sorry for the jacking around and moving around. But, uh, see that locking thing? You gotta make sure that that is where the nut on this thing ends up lining up. It's kind of difficult to see. I wish we had some better lighting, but you can't really see it at all. Actually. But anyway, once it's on there, um, you want it sitting at the same point on the old one. It was just there above the the edge so if you look at that that's about where we're sitting and now I'm going to tighten this up and tighten that nut up there but I can't do that and hold this camera so we'll be back in just a second okay that's on there and uh, that little nut there is tightened up um, I wanted to also point out where we're looking at this these clips you have to study that for a while looking at it to realize what those are for and why there's not one here and why there's one over here well, there's a bigger one over there. They're, they're weights, uh, similar to the weights that get mounted on a, you know, a typical car wheel. They'll place different size weights at different points in order to balance it, but the manufacturer put those weights there to balance this, this thing out. So don't move those, don't take them off. You know, they're not for something that's not there anymore. They're just there to balance, uh, keep that spindle perfectly balanced when it's spinning at high speed. So you wanna definitely make sure those things stay there. All right, now we just take the whole entire motor and uh, we turn it upside down and mount it to the grill. All right, just to show you how this is going to work real quick, I'm going to have to actually do this off camera, but just to show you how it's going to work, I'm a little assistant here. He's balancing this thing on the spindle uh, down here so that you can see none of the weights on the blades. We just don't want those blades to bend. That's really bad. Um, 
uh, if balancing them that finely is important, you can imagine that bending them all up would be a bad news uh, thing. So we want to make sure these holes are lined up, which they are, because this is the exact right motor. We're not having to try to tap new holes into it or something like that. Um, and then I'll screw those down with those black screws that I have. So uh, just a second. Okay, so on this last one here, I figured I'd at least show you which tool I'm using. Um, 5 16 typical old uh, cheap ratchet out of a uh, $10 uh, Walmart toolkit. So no special tools. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. I can't do it with uh, holding the camera. So I'll do it off camera, but I just want to show you what tools I'm using. All right, so all those uh, are in there. Now that's a, a die cast kind of alloy metal under there that you're screwed into. So you don't want to try to ninja torque them on there. You just want to have them uh, snug down, and uh, that's that's going to be good enough. The next thing we got to do is run the wiring through this this uh, conduit, rubber conduit here on the side. So we're going to get all this stuff through here. We're going to run it one line at a time. So, but in order to do that, we have to pull the panel off the side down here first. So that's the next step. All right. So we got our fan motor sitting there upside down again. Don't want to put weight on those blades. And now it's time to turn to this and find out what's holding this on. It turns out it's actually only two screws, which I hand tighten again. Right there. Put these down below so they don't get mixed up with the other ones. And one back here. And there might be one at the top, too. I'm not sure. I think that's it. Let's see. No, that's just it. So we just kind of pull it down the way we want it, and the whole thing just slides out. Like that, and set that over here on the side, and we're looking at where the wiring will come in to the this whole area here. Uh, by the way, this is a new capacitor. That is uh, what I well again I replaced it. I don't know if the original was bad or not, but we're going to make sure um, that we got the right one in there. The one that a so-called repairman came in and uh, replaced last year, or the year before. I don't remember was completely the wrong side. This size. This one here requires, again, just call your local uh, dealer. They can tell you what size you need. Um, this is a uh, 45 slash 3, 45 microfarad, 3 microfarad for the uh, fan, uh, 45 mic microfarad used for getting it started. Um, that, those need to be the right values. Uh, more so the second one than the first one. Um, the one he put in there was a 45 7.5, which is way too much run voltage for that motor. Um, or capacitance actually is what's running through there um, that's not the right value for this motor so it leads to them burning up sooner imagine that um, that's why we're repairing this today probably I'm sure that the motor may have lasted a, a bit longer had it had the right capacitor in there so that's another lesson don't trust anybody even though they're supposedly trained and official and all that good stuff because you know what I hate to say it, but I'm pretty jaded about that stuff, you know. I think most people are idiots. Um, I hate to say that because there are some people who have spent years and years and years, um, you know, training and getting a lot of experience. They take a lot of pride in what they're doing. Unfortunately, that's not what's dominating the repair market in anything anymore. It doesn't matter whether you're taking your car, you know, trusting someone to repair your roof, trusting someone to repair your air conditioner. It just doesn't matter what it is. Uh, no one takes pride in their work. It's all ram it through, get it done as fast as possible, and build a customer. All right, let me point out while we're doing this, we don't want to in any way have these contact anything. They're not supposed to contact. Even though there's no voltage from the wall, that capacitor can hold capacitance and send voltage places we don't like. So we're going to have an assistant here. Hold these. Assistant, hold those up on the side there. Just don't let them, don't drop them, okay? That's an important thing there. If you had, you know, something to tie them back with, you could do that as well. But uh, that's that's what my assistant is for. He's here to help out with that stuff. All right, we just push these through one at a time because they won't go through all at one time the way they are. And now we got them all nice and tight. Hold that one too. Hold all three of them tight. All right, so assistant's got those. They're not touching anything. And what he's going to do is, as I flip this upside down, he's going to pull those through backwards to make sure that uh, they don't get caught up in anything. And so I don't know if I can really juggle this while I'm, well, I've got the camera, but so apologize for any shaking around and all that good stuff, but maybe I can show you some of this while we're 
uh, doing that. We want to make sure that the the wires, golly, the wires are closest to that thing there. So I'm going to end the camera for now. We'll turn it around, then I'll show you. All right. Now, as you can see, we have this all on here, and the assistant here has these wires that are pulled through, and we have it with this conduit it's lined up right to where those. Uh, so we can zoom that or not? Probably not, but right to where those wires went into that motor. So that's where we want it. We want it lined up, and that's exactly how it was before. So now we're going to take our little screws we pulled out earlier and get them started one by one. And then next, we're going to get these uh, in here. It's funny trying to do something, you know, while you've got a camera where it you, know, you find yourself paying attention to what you're doing and not paying attention to the camera and all of a sudden you realize it's off. And this is a last minute thing I decided to video this thing because I figured it would be a lot of people interested in seeing what goes into some of this stuff. Um, there we go. And uh, just got to tighten those up. So that's just the same ratchet. Simple enough. Put it on there. Like, you know, we don't need a ninja torque it or anything. Just, you know, of course it's kind of hard to do one handed, but. to think about using a tripod or something next time. Come on. Gee, please. There we go. Alright, so as you can see, typical ratchet use. There's nothing special here. We'll go do that on each one of them. Now with those, uh, what I discovered is that they will strip extremely easily. The sheet metal, I guess, is uh, just, you know, just real thin or something like that. But anyway, don't even try to tighten them at all. I mean, just bring them down to where they offer some resistance, and that's good enough. I mean, the fan is not going anywhere. Um, otherwise, you'll just strip them out, and then they won't be any good for holding anything at all. It'll just be sitting in there at that point. All right, now we go to rewiring this um, this thing back the way it was before. Um, I want to point out that you know whether you use this or if you got your own air conditioner, always do what I've done. Take reference photos ahead of time. When you're taking something apart, I learned a long time ago, you know, years ago when we were taking things apart, we'd always label things and we'd put different colored tape on things and stuff like that. Maybe uh, mark it with different kinds of uh, colored paint. Not anymore. Today, if you can get in there with a camera of any sort and it has decent enough lighting, just take photos. You'll see exactly how it was supposed to go together um, and you can wire it back up the same way again and, and not have near the problems that you're going to have trying to figure it out after the fact because you will forget, even if it's just a few minutes not to mention a week like it is in this case. So uh, let me get some tie wraps. Uh, there were tie wraps on there to begin with. Let me get those and uh, we can tighten this thing up and get it all together. Okay, we want to get this black wire on here, which is where it originally came off, right there. And uh, we're going to tighten these all up with tie wraps like that when we're done. But orange. We want to try to keep these as untangled as much as possible so they'll roll up nice. Orange is follow me down here and then go on here. Boy, that thing is tight. And uh, brown will go on to this. Back here on the back side, there's a fan. There's one that says fan. fan of if you can trying to do things with one hand because it's the less chance you're going to have of actually touching something with the other hand and grounding your entire body to something so I try to do that where it's possible anyway when you're dealing with wires and contacts so at this point we're going to pull these up as much as possible and try to tie them together and kind of like a loom just to keep them up out of the way different lengths so get ourselves a tie wrap and put that on there. I think these are tie wraps or zip ties. Maybe it's both. I think tie wrap is a brand name and zip ties is what it is. Or maybe they're both brand names. I don't know. But anyway, get that there like that. 
and stay there, stay there, and we'll clip all this extra here, and we are all wired up. Got our capacitor here, which is replacing the original. Um, let me show you where the original went. All right, if you look down here, and give you context, down here there's a hole, and uh, in that hole there is where the original one went. Uh, unfortunately, you know, as things happen sometimes, the manufacturer specs change over the years, and they started later replacing that model of capacitor with this one here, which is uh, you know, like two and a half inch or three inch, whatever the case is. Uh, that one was a two inch, and so this won't fit in there anymore. So. If you have a place to tie wrap it up, you can tie wrap it up against something. I don't really have anything to tie wrap it up against. We have this nice shelf here, and it's not going to go anywhere from there. Um, but you just basically want to make sure it's in a place where it's secure, that it can't rattle around and touch anything else. So uh, just wanted to point that out. And and all this stuff that's being done, you know, I am not in any way claiming to be an official AC repair guy. But kind of as I was alluding to earlier, uh, I don't have all that much faith in some of these guys that call themselves AC repair guys. So, um, you know, again, not to knock on someone who knows uh, what they're doing and has been doing it for many years, but uh, some of the stuff is very basic. Now, we're not getting into dealing with pressure lines and things like that. I have no clue about that, but this is just basic electricity. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and get this panel back on. All right, so once we've slid that panel up in underneath that lip there, just take these little screws that conveniently put down here right beside this thing. We're going to tighten these in here. These are actually got little flat heads uh, on flat head slots on the end of them. So if you have a flat screw, flat head screwdriver, you can tighten them up pretty easily. That's actually what I'll be doing. I'll be getting a flat head screwdriver to tighten that up. All right, so they're kind of finger tight in there, and uh, I'm just going to grab myself a flat head screwdriver and do the rest of the tightening. All right, out of the same old cheap toolbox, ten dollar toolbox. By the way, those capacitors, it's unbelievable. Sometimes, some places, you gotta watch uh, AC supplies and AC repair guys because they'll try to charge you like, who knows how much, like $100 for a capacitor. Those capacitors, like mine, was literally like $9. I mean, it was not expensive at all. And it's the original. I mean, it's not even some you know aftermarket kind of thing. It's the one that's the official replacement, so. Um, I've, I saw mine online as much as $45, and uh, I did actually buy that from the local AC supply guys, and they gave me kind of a contractor rate on it, even though I'm not a contractor, um, so I got it for $9. You can ask them, just say, hey, look, you know, I mean, they don't normally sell to the public on a regular basis anyway, and they're not there. That's not the way they make money, so if they're selling to you at all, they're really doing it to you more as a favor, so it doesn't hurt to ask to say, hey, can you give me a contractor rate? And um, you know, it's worth asking. I mean, otherwise you may be throwing away thirty, forty dollars, uh, at least ten, because I would say most capacitors cost generally at least twenty dollars. So, anyway, that's all tightened on there, and we are um, looking at the completed project so far. Anyway, still got to get the power uh, connector uh, back in. Put our tools away. Hopefully you got a little helper like I do, who's you know, patiently sitting there and putting away all the extra things that I've been using. Which hasn't been a whole lot. This project didn't require a lot of tools. So we want to get our breaker thing in here. Let's get that plugged in right. Difficult to even see. Sorry about that. I can't, I can't even see it even though I'm looking right at it. Now hopefully you have a house where you have uh, something nice as this, but a big giant label double breaker like this for us, um, that you can just click like that and then you're back on. All that's left to do now is go in and set the thermostat and see how things work. Okay, so I just uh, switched on the AC unit here. We have a target temperature of 72 degrees. Right now it's 79 and that's actually running two window units in the house, so we'll see how our AC is doing outside. So here we are, the uh, AC is cranking, the fan is turning, looking good, 
Only time will tell whether we got a good motor or not. It is brand new, but that doesn't necessarily tell you anything. Sometimes a brand new motor can go bad very shortly after. But at least we know the wiring is right. We got the right capacitor, we got the right wiring, we got a new motor, so things are looking good. Um, step back away from the noise a little bit. Uh, all in all, I can say that this is not a tough job to do. And I can tell you that if you call someone out to say, um, you know, my air conditioner is just making a buzzing noise, the fan's not turning, you know, there's a couple things you can check first off. It never hurts to replace a capacitor because uh, as long as you take some basic electrical precautions, you know, use rubber gloves. Um, you know, uh, if you're not familiar with handling electricity, which I am reasonably familiar with handling, handling electricity, but even when I was taking it out, just in case there was something else wacky going on, uh, I was using a rubber glove. Um, you know, you make sure you use rubber gloves. Make sure you disconnect all forms of power as far as, uh, you know, the breaker and those kind of things like that, the shutoffs, and just take your time, you know, put things back where they go as you're taking it apart. Um, try replacing that capacitor because that's a like a $10, maybe $20, and even if you get burned, maybe a $30 or $40 part. Pretty inexpensive, and it never hurts to replace a capacitor. That's all I can tell you. As long as you're getting the right one, it never hurts because they take a lot of wear. They're what runs that motor. Um, power's constantly going through them, and they take a real hit every time that motor turns on and off. So uh, they, they degrade relatively quickly, especially with these newer capacitors these days. Um, the old ones would last 20 years, you know. These newer ones are, even the good ones, truthfully, are Chinese, and so replacing them every year or two is never going to hurt you. Uh, try the capacitor, and uh, that motor is still not turning. You can almost be sure the motor's burned out. So it's not a hard job to do, at least not on these. I never repaired one on any other one. I'm not an AC repair guy, but it just was common sense and, and logic. So there you go. Hope maybe this saves you some money uh, this year. Um, I was going to point out earlier that uh, if you have an AC guy come out, I can tell you right now, depending on what kind of air you live in, what kind of rates they charge, you could easily, easily wrap six or seven hundred dollars up in a repair like this. Between labor, motor, capacitor, and uh, and any other minor things they may want to do. So it cost me a grand total of one twenty-five for the motor and uh, less than ten dollars for the uh, capacitor. So one thirty-five, and we're back running. Hope this helps you out, and uh, stay cool this summer.